Back in January, we booked a stay at a glamping resort called Woods on Pender. <laughs> so Woods on Pender is located on Pender Island. And Pender Island is another one of the Southern Gulf Islands, just like Salt Spring Island, where we went earlier this summer. Pender Island is even smaller than Salt Spring Island and is home to just over 2,000 permanent residents. And before the Europeans first made contact, it was inhabited by the Coast Salish First Nations. So Pender Island is actually made up of two islands, North Pender Island and South Pender Island, and it's connected by a bridge. It wasn't always this way though, it was actually excavated in 1903 to allow safe passage for ships because it was safer than traversing the stormy seas past the south end of the island. So to get to Pender Island from Vancouver, you can take the BC ferries. It leaves from the Tawasin Ferry Terminal, and for us, the ride took about two hours. The ferry actually stops at um, multiple other islands along the way as well, but depending on which ferry you take, it could be quicker or shorter, um, depending on how many stops it has to make. So the ferry that we took, it stopped actually at Main Island where we actually had to transfer to a smaller ferry and then from there it went to Pender Island. Oh. oh my god, I hope to get that. The dog is so cute. Yeah, I'm just focusing on the dog now. Five and six. Oh, the sailor shortcut has like orcas on it. So when we arrived, it was still too early to check in. So we stopped for lunch at a place called Joe's Place. And after that, we still had some time to kill. So we just opened up Google Maps and just picked a place to drive to. And we picked a place called Medicine Beach. And then finally, it was time to head to our cider tasting that we booked at 3 p.m. So there is a cidery on the island. It's called Twin Island Ciders. Um, and what's special is that they use the apples from their century-old apple trees on the island and on some of the other islands too, I believe. Um, and they make cider from that and they use the naturally occurring yeasts. Uh, in the process, and they also make perry from pears. Um, so it was a really good experience. It was very tasty, and you can tell they are really passionate about what they do. And then after we were done at the cidery, it was time to check in at Woods. So Woods is a glamping resort. It's located on 7.3 acres of wooded land and it actually used to be an inn before it was renovated to what it is now. Now it is home to a bunch of airstreams, cabins, a motel, and it also offers massage services 
It has a restaurant and a food truck as well. So when we got there, we were led up to our Airstream. Ours was located at the very top of the hill, and it had a view of the ocean and the mountains. Uh -huh. Ta-da! And our Airstream was Airstream number one. It is a 2009 International Signature 25FB uh, designed by Christopher C. Deem. If that means anything to you, I don't know a lot about Airstreams, but that's the model that we had. So the Airstream was a lot of fun. It had everything we needed. We had a hot tub with ours, which we used pretty much every night. Couldn't stay very long because it gets really hot in there. But it was really nice to just watch the stars while you're in the hot tub. There's a fire bowl, um, there's a barbecue, there's a hammock. You can cook inside the Airstream. It's just super cozy and really fun to stay in. For dinner, we just went down to the Woods restaurant. Um, because of COVID, they weren't doing any dine-in, but you could eat on their patio if you wanted. Otherwise, just take the food away and eat wherever you want. So we were also pleasantly surprised to find that there were some little animals on the premise. <laughs> At first, I thought, that they were all the same type of chickens. Actually, we thought they were all the same type of chickens. We thought that that pair was, were the parents and those little fluffy ones were the babies. And then we realized they were actually two different types of chickens. So the pair were apparently Belgian Duclas. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And then the, the fluffy ones are Silkies. So what's really great on this island is just how quiet it is. The stars were incredible at night. It was so sparkly. It was just filled, the sky was just filled with stars. You can hear ravens all the time when their throaty kind of croak. You sometimes see deer, there's lots of deer on the island and there are no real predators on this island.
So we only had one thing really planned for the second day, just taking things pretty slow on the, on the small island. We booked a kayaking tour to go see the seals. It's called the Seals and Smiles Tour. It took about two and a half hours. The company is called Dog Mermaid. So it is actually indigenous owned and operated. And our guide, Kai, was very knowledgeable and told us some stories as well. And there was one area where we were kind of kayaking through a bunch of kelp, bull kelp. Um, and she told us to pick it up and see what was living on there. And um, it was actually crabs. So we kind of didn't really expect that, but that was really fun. And then of course the main event was the seals, the seal colony. They were all just lazing around on the rocks. It was so, so cute. Day three, we drove down to a pizza shop called Penderosa Pizza. We got our lunch there to take away, and while we were waiting for the pizza, we also got some coffee from the coffee shop next door called Slow Coast Coffee. Do you do iced coffee? Maybe? I saw it come up. Okay. Go down. What happened there? Well, there was a wasp that jumped into the trunk of the car with us because it smelled the pizza. And then I thought it left, but it didn't. So I hope it's not in here anymore. So once we got our pizzas, we drove to Roseland, which is part of the Gulf Islands National Park Reserve. Here there's an orchard, one of 17 orchards in the Gulf Islands Park Reserve. And it is interesting because it is an example of the horticultural practices from the early European settlers on the island. So these trees are quite old, I believe. They're century old trees. And what's cool is that you can actually pick the fruit 
So you're allowed to pick six pieces of each type of fruit from the trees per person. So Roseland is where Robert Rowe, a Scottish settler, and his family used to live. The Pender Island Museum is actually located here inside one of the old buildings preserved from 1908. And we went to the museum and from there we found out that Robert Rowe and his family bought their house um, from a Vancouver lumber company. It was a kit house and it came to a total of $589.62, which is insane to think about now. And so aside from the orchard, there is also an islet that you can walk out onto. There's a trail, not very long. It's a very nice little uh, walk. When the tide is low, you can walk out onto this islet. When it's high, you actually can't really cross it. So go when the tide is low, you'll get a nice little walk. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Don't see if they're hissing at all. I see like a can of the goose. It's like a blanket. <laughs> So while I was sleeping overnight, I remember waking up many times, just kind of half asleep thinking, why does it smell so funny? It smells really smoky. And then I'd fall back asleep again. And then I woke up in the morning and I could still smell it. So I looked out the window and yeah, it was smoky outside. So I walked outside and it was, the smell was actually really, really strong. You couldn't see the mountains anymore and the sun kind of had um, a weird hazy glow to it so i checked on my phone i was wanted to see if there was something going on wildfires um, and actually yes there were wildfires it was the smoke coming up from the wildfires in the states and this was actually the first day of many days that we got shrouded in the smoke coming up from washington oregon and california Time to go. Time to say goodbye to the airstream. Bye.
Bye-bye, Esther. After we checked out in the late morning, we went to just grab some coffee again from Slow Coast Coffee and we just looked at the map and decided to drive all the way to the south end of the island. My turn. Oh, it's so smoky. It's so grey. And all the way at the other end, there was a very pebbly beach. And normally I think you can see the San Juan Islands and Mount Baker, but we couldn't really see any of that because of the smoke. After that, we uh, drove back up to the north end of the island to see what was there. I would highly recommend Pender Island for just a really slow travel kind of getaway for a few days or more. There's lots of nature and lots of ravens to see and I'd highly recommend staying at Woods. They are quite busy, so which is why we ended up booking so early in January for our stay in end of September. <laughs>